Good morning. So today and next lecture, we are talking about the nucleus. Traditionally, nucleus is very well known cell component, including genetics. But here, two articles, they deliver the idea nucleus acts as a mechanical sensor. So this researcher, they, she wrote this article. Nucleus is a key to how cells sense personal space. In two independent studies, researchers find that the organelle is responsible for a switch that allows cells to start moving when they squeeze. In a pair of paper published in the same issue of a cell in 2015, 2015 two groups showed that Putting physical pressure on cells by confining them, for instance, causes previously stationary cells to start moving quickly. But it wasn't clear how the translated being squeezed into relocating. Many of the same researchers, again working on working in two independent teams, have now found that the nucleus is responsible for sensing changes in pressure and triggering the signaling cas cascade that leads cells to get moving. Both studies were published today, October 15, in Science, 2012. As, as she mentioned before, two papers in same issue, Cell Journal, 2015, they mentioned that force can make cells move quickly. Here, also, after putting this kind of PEG surface on the top of the cell, and then cell can move their morphology in more with high cortical contractility and more cell movement velocity. So this is we can call it stationary cell, not moving, not much moving, but this cell, we can say, more migrating cell. So simply, when you push the cell on the top, the cell move quickly. This is published in Matthew Peel group. And then in same issue, this Ver Verona, she published Cell, when they have this kind of mesenchymal structure or a blabbing structure, anyhow, when, when you move, when you change the motility switch with amoeboid structure, after putting cortical contractility increase. So depending on how you change the cortical contractility, Contractility means that how cell can have their force. Cortical means outside. Okay. When you make when you make the more contractility to the outside of a cell, peripheral area, cell move quickly. So these two papers published in 2015, but they didn't reveal how this kind of thing happened. But in the meanwhile, nucleus might play a mechanical transducer, transducer by activating CPLA2, which is published in 2016 in cell. So intact cell, normal, when cells are damaged by the tissue injury or necrosis, cell swelling. In, in case of tissue injury, also cell experience the outside of the environment, just normal air, so cell swelling. And then leukocyte recruitment occur. How it happened? In normal condition, nuclear lamina, nuclear membrane structure, the perinuclear actin they have, in, in swelling, this perinuclear actin, they are removed. And then, at that time, 
nuclear lamina they are more stretched and then the CPLA2 is the enzyme to degrade it, this nuclear membrane that can attach under stretching condition and with help of the calcium they degrade the cell membrane and then make arachinoic acid AA which is key component for recruiting leukocyte as an inflammatory marker so meanwhile this so because of this mechanism on the stretch of the nuclear membrane CPLA can attach to the nuclear, nucleus membrane, this nar cell membrane, nucleus membrane, and then with the inclusion of the calcium, this CPLA, they degrade the nuclear membrane and then make inflammatory molecule, which is alkanoic acid, AA. So here, briefly, Nuclear swelling and membrane stretch acts as a mechanical activation signal for inflammatory repeat signaling that attracts leukocyte to site of tissue damage. Cell swelling and lysis generate pro-inflammatory aconocytes through nuclear swelling. Nuclear swelling control aconocyte synthesis by activating CPLA2. Swelling induced nuclear egg stretch activate CPLA by altering enzyme repeat interaction, affecting and the nuclear lamina regulates swelling induced CPLA activation. So this guy, Philip, he published this article in 2016 in Cell. So, and make proposal, nucleus might play a mechanical transistor by activating CPLA2. And then now, This Philip, maybe he is one of the reviewers of the coming two papers. So he wrote, he wrote this article in Science, Cellular Sense of Space and Pressure, Nuclear Membrane Mechanical Transduction. So before this article, people think about only cell membrane, so cytoplasm membrane that can act as a mechanotransduction doctor, but here, not only cell membrane, but also nucleus itself, they can act as a mechanotransduction. Cells sense critical confinement and swelling through stretch in their nuclear membrane. Calcium concentration and nuclear membrane stretch together activate cytosolic phospholipase A2, CPLA2 which cleaves nuclear membrane phospholipid into lysophospholipids and arachinoic acid, AA. These cleave products are further metabolized to bioactive lipids that mediate cell autonomous paracrine effect. Here, when you compress the cell, and then when nucleus is compressed, they produce CPLA. When cells are swollen by tissue injury or microenvironment, also they are stretched, this nuclear membrane stretch, and then they are making CPLA activation. CPLA, they can physically bind the nucleus membrane, and then they make AA. This, they can induce into the same cell, cortical contraction, peripheral cell contraction, Blabbing, this is blabbing, round shape, and then cell movement quickly. Other cells, they act as a chemotaxis or a differentiation and survival. So he write down this article after publishing this cell, cell, cell manuscript. CPRA and nuclear mechanism transduction is very important for regulating same cell behavior and other cell behave. And then, five years later, two papers came in Science 2012, same issue. Nucleus direct sense, directly sense force. So today, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna 
talk about this left paper published by Matthew Peel. As you know, 2015, he published under compression force, cell migrate quickly, but he didn't reveal the mechanism. Here in the same science paper, same group, he published the nucleus acts as a ruler tailoring cell response to special constraints. And then other group, Verona, also she published nucleus major shape chains for cellular proprioception to control dynamic cell behavior. So you have to think about why these two papers published in Science 2012, same issue. This is the first paper to sh show them nucleus acts as a mechanical transduction component. Okay, this is some um, very game challenger. So when you think about your research or product, you have to think about how your fiber or stiffness or whatever you deal with by your hand, not only cell membrane, but also nucleus itself, they can act to transduce some external signal to the cell. And then because of this nuclear membrane tension stretch, they can change certain behavior of the cell. So Matthew Peel is yeah, this guy, yeah, very creative guy, I think. So he published many good papers in Nature Cell Biology, Science, and PNAS cell. And then he is one of the great scientists in Fr France. And in France, as you know, well-known Institute of Curie. So he's one of the leader of this Institute of Curry group. And then this Verona, yeah, she is located in Barcelona, Spain. Okay. So he is one of the readers of this CRG group. CRG group is similar institute like ITREN. And then one of the team leaders is this Verona. So he published very good journal in cell, cell science cell report. So as a summary, okay, let's look at this one. So as I as I told you last lecture, this Matthew Peel, he made special compressed PDMS design, right? So using this same design, he pushed the cell from the top. And then, as you can see, when you look at the nucleus using DAPI, their shape is round, right? But to be honest, when you look in detail, they are not round. They are, they having, they are having this kind of folding structure, okay? This folding structure under compression, they are enlarged, under tension, okay? So this folding, why they have to exist? Cause under compression, they don't have much time to make another nuclear membrane. So this is some kind of saving for external stimuli induced stretch. So under force, this folding structure is unfolded. Unfolded means they are stretch. And then under the stretch, this CPLA, they are originally off, normal condition. But under compression, or these cells are stretched left and right, nucleus membrane also stretch. And then CPLA attach on the nucleus membrane with the help of calcium, and then they are making this ARA, AA, which is well-known inflammatory component. But interestingly, this inflammatory component, they can activate cortical ectomagic contractility. Because of this, cell migrate fast. Because this ectomagic contractility increase, 
they are heavily involved in cell migration. So let's look at the paper in detail. So as I told you, this paper is published in 2012 Science and then Matthew PL Group. So nucleus acts as a ruler tailoring cell response to spatial constraints. Here, they are using flat micro cantilever. And then, as a stepwise manner, he pushed the cell from the top. Originally, the cell height is 20 micrometer. They are using suspended cell, not adherent cell, at the first time. Suspension cell, their height is 20 micrometer. The total cell height, but they compressed 10, 5. So from the 10 to 5, he compressed. Compressed. And then after compressed to the 10 to 5, they should induce more compressed force like 0, 10, 25, 50, 75, right? But meanwhile, there's no response from the cell. Response means this is their just, this adjustment. They are maintaining this line, the force. But at 5 micrometer of confinement height, what happened? Cell start to react they make more force, okay? Not straight, they increase, which means that cell respond against the force. So they find out, oh, from the five micrometer height, cell start to respond on the compression. And then they count the number of the force response cell fraction. 10, actually 10% they react. For five micrometer, almost 100% they react, which means 5 micrometer somehow is a key threshold to induce cell response against the external force. Meanwhile, they check the myosin 2. Myosin 2 is ectomyosin contracted marker, which is making force from the cell. 10 micrometer, over time, no change. 5 micrometer, over time, they start to show up, especially two to three minutes later. Okay? So they found out under five micrometer confinement compression cell, they are making myosin 2 signal to resist the external force. Okay? So this is their quantification. Cytoplasm means overall, cortex means outside of the peripheral area they making this marker to show how they react. So 10 micrometer confinement, no change as a control. Five micrometer, they start to show up like this. So under DMSO control group, they are increasing as we, as we see, but after treating this inhibitor, why? Inhibitor of myosin 2, right? Inhibition of rock, in, rock inhibitor. Rock inhibitor, they inhibit this myosin 2 signal, so they're gone. No change of the cortic, cortex periphery expression. And meanwhile, also, they checked the force from the cell. Originally, 20 nanonewton is enough for making 10 micrometer of compressed. For 5 micrometer, while they're increasing, what happened? Cell also induce force against this confinement, 5 micrometer compression. They're increasing, but under this rock inhibitor, myosin 2 inhibitor, they're decreasing. So we can say that this 5 micrometer confined dependent myosin 2 signal 
is from the rock signaling. Okay, rock signaling. Traditional, traditionally well known machine to a stream. Okay, and then this force also mediated by rock signaling. Now this is from the 2D condition. They put the cell on the slide glass and then push from the top using this flat micro cantilever. And then what happened to 3D? They, they are using collagen 3D hydrogel. So 3D cell derived matrix is collagen. And then they see the cell fibrosarcoma. And then they check the myosin 2 level. So when this collagen matrix, their pore size is from 1 to 10 micrometer. So when they check the 10 micrometer confined cell, there is not much of myosin 2 signal increase. But 5 micrometer confined cell, what happened? Myosin 2 level is increased. So we can say that this myosin 2 increase under confinement, which is which is also detected in 3D condition, not only 2D. They prove this concept. This is a general micro general phenomenon. So they correlate this myosin 2 cortex level with the cell dimension. So high dimension, which means not com not confined, they have less myosin 2 level cortex, but when they are more confined in 3D structure, they have high myosin 2 level. Okay, this is what we can easily expect. And then they want to know how this myosin 2 cortex expression is induced. So this blue one is plasma membrane tension, which means cell membrane tension, traditionally well known. So when they are compressed, when cells are compressed, cell membrane stretch. And then, as well as nucleus envelope or ear, they are attaching each other. S nuclear membrane also tensioned. Okay, so they want to decouple this kind of phenomenon is from the cell membrane tension itself or nuclear membrane tension itself, including ER. So this is some DOCL nuclear I mean, cell membrane tension remover. Okay, they relieve the tension from the cell membrane. Gadolinium, as you know, piezo, mechanosensitive ion channel, which is mostly located in the cell membrane. Actually, there are some of them they are located in the nucleus. But here, they are using this one as a cell membrane ion channel. BAPTA is extracellular calcium chelator. Okay, which is mostly related to the cell membrane. AA is here. AA is inhibiting calcium dependent nuclear membrane tension sensitive to enzyme CPLA. So we can say that CPLA induced nuclear membrane tension inhibitor. Okay. AA is nuclear membrane tension mediated activity. And then EAPB is also uh, block stretch activated I, I, INSP3 receptor, liberating calcium from the membrane of the nucleus or ER. So this is related to the calcium relief from the nucleus, okay? Co in contrast to the, this gadolinium. This is mostly liberating, release the calcium from the extracellular level to the intracellular level. But here, from the intracellular level, they release the calcium from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. BAPTA IM is intracellular calcium chelator. ML7, as you know, one of the key myosin 2 inhibitor. So here we can say that red one is related to the nucleus membrane, related one. Blue one is cell membrane, plasma membrane. No change from the cell membrane 
inhibitor. Cell membrane tension relief, mechanosensitive cell membrane receptor, extracellular calcium, no change. Under compress the cell 5 micrometer. But they are decreasing this inhibitor. What is that? CPLA induced calcium. Also, INC, INC, P3, calcium relief from the nucleus, and then intercellular calcium level. And then not only myosin 2, but also cell induced force, also decreasing this nucleus envelope tension inhibitor. Okay? So we can say that, oh, while they are compressed to 5 micrometer, cell membrane doesn't affect. Nuclear is important, okay, from this inhibitor study. So all these inhibitor, we already bought and then incubate in our mechano minus 20 degree refrigerator. So you can use it any time. So when they check the nucleus, nucleus, nucleus 20 mic, not less than 20 micrometer. Cell is around 20, but Nucleus around 18, like that. 10, 5, also while they're compressed. Nuclear is also compressed. In that, in that case, what happened? Cell 2D projection, they are enhanced. But cell volume doesn't change. Okay? And then we are very interesting. Oh, how this happens? Cell volume change, maintain, cell surface increase, which means this height is decreasing, right? So they are more flattened. And then they look at in detail, they, when they use the DAPI, this is from the DAPI image. DAPI image, you cannot see any kind of this folding like this. But when you look at this lab 2, is one of the cell membrane protein. This plus image also we have it, so you can use it anytime. When you transfect this lab 2, the cell and then check this cell membrane and nucleus membrane, they are folded like that. While they are compressed, the folded is unfolded like this. Folded, they are stretched. So they measure the excess of perimeter. Excess perimeter is how this folded structure exists. They are Originally around this one, yeah. excessively, this is 10 or 50 percent of excessive of nucleus membrane they have, but they are decreasing while they are compressed. 20, 10, 5 micrometer. Okay. And then, this is five when they release the compression. You can see this kind of 4D structure. You can see many, many things. Around 40 or 50 percent, you can, you can see. Which means, originally, the cell have this kind of 4D structure to prepare the, any external force environment. So they want to say that this 4D nucleus membrane can act as a sensor of the external force. While they are stretched, nucleus, they can feel, oh, I am under the pressure. So I have to do something. They can say that. So to support this kind of 4D, 20 micrometer, this nuclear envelope, actually they are not static, they are very dynamically changed. But under compressed, not changed that much. Okay? Which means why they are under stretched. While they are compressed, nuclear membrane they are stretched. So the nuclear envelope fluctuation is severely decreased. And then they check the nuclear pore. NUP107 is nuclear pore protein. 10 micrometer control, like this. Nuclear pore this pore distance is around 500 nanometer. But while they are compressed, nucleus pore, which is located in nuclear membrane, they are stretched. And then 
they come to around 1,000 nanometer, two times increase. So we can say, oh, we can say that this fluctuation is nuclear pore and then CPLA signal. As you know, CPLA is originally located in inside of nucleus overall. But while they stretch, they are, this, they are positioned in the periphery of, of the cell nucleus membrane, which is already proved by 2016 cell journal. They are located in nuclear envelope, periphery area of the nucleus. So from this observation, which is previously well known for supporting nucleus membrane stretch, so they find out nuclear membrane stretch, and then this is supporting data. This they are really stretch. This in the CPRA already well known on the stretch they are attaching to the nuclear membrane is proved. So here you always have to remember if we want to say something in your research, you always have to follow the other people how they prove their concept. For example, if you culture yourself on different stiffness and they want to say that nucleus can act as a, some nuclear sensor, and then at least two or one of these things should be studied, investigated, to say that at least this, oh, after transfect lab two, and then all oh, my cell nucleus is, they're stretched, they're flattened. And plus, this kind of CPLA signal also, they're distributed in periphery to support nucleus extension. Okay? So at least one, you have to say that. And then next, okay, I, we, can, we observe nucleus membrane is tension under compressed. So what is their underlying mechanism? So here, left one, blue one is nuclear envelope, right one is plasma membrane. How they, they have excessive plasma membrane? So here, nuclear envelope, they are directly, on the same time, they are decreasing. I stretch and then force from the cell. After 50 seconds later, they start to show up the force, which means envelope stretch first and then cell make the power. Okay? They want to say the sequence nuclear envelope stretch and then force somehow they are induced. When force are induced, excessive of Plasma membrane, cell membrane, also they are increasing. Why? Like this. 2010, they are pushing like that. But under 5 micrometer, this inside of nucleus folding structure, they are stretched over time, 60 minutes. Meanwhile, plasma membrane, they start to show up this kind of blabbing structure. This is the marker of this excessive or perimeter. Okay? They are increasing. Okay? So this is actually this blabbing is marker of the apoptosis actually. Initial apoptosis marker. So confinement height while they are compressed, this excessive of nuclear envelope they are decreasing. Ah sorry, this is some actually depending on the cell, some cells have different nuclear envelope, excessive. So before confinement, uh, their height is around this. And then while they're confined, this. So for example, you, you have this, you have one, two, three, four, five, six cell. When you look at the first cell, their original, how can I say, excessive, this excessive of folding inside the nucleus is 10%. In that case, 10 micrometer confinement is enough to induce force from the cell. But when your cell, they have 
50% of the nuclear folding, many, many folding here, and then you have to compress more. Not only 10 micrometer, you have to 5 micrometer compressed. Okay? So this is some cell, 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 singularly they visualized it. Okay? So they want to correlate the nuclear folding, how much is, in, very, is key for making the this confinement height to induce contract force. So as a summary, they mentioned that cell top is nucleus, cell when they are compressed, height is decreased. Also they are tensioned, cell membrane. Meanwhile, nucleus also flattened, increase of cell area, x, y axis, but Meanwhile, height is decreased. So they are tensioned. So cell surface area is enhanced under compression, but height is decreased, so volume is similar. Meanwhile, this folding nucleus membrane, they are stretched. And then stress sensitive channel coming up. But here, they didn't say this is not pH or something, mechanical sensitive things, but they said they did a little detail which kind of specific ion channel is involved. But here they mentioned this one. They didn't know that, but stretch activated INS, INS P3RS ionistor triphosphate receptor is key for regulating this phenomenon. And then from this nucleus membrane, not cell, not cell, cell, cell plus membrane, calcium is released from the nucleus to cytoplasm, okay? From the nucleus from cytoplasm release of calcium, and then this calcium can activate this contractility of force in the cell, okay? So because of this cell contractility increase, they migrate fast and then they are doing something, okay? So this is not from, not, not cell membrane to nucleus. This is nuclear to cell cytoplasm signaling, okay? So all of this content is very similar to so cell membrane to nucleus, but only difference is that the direction, inside to the outside, nucleus to the cytoplasm. Okay. This is why this paper is called Game Challenger. And then, okay, until now we compress the cell. Here, they using another platform, microfluidic. So, actually, this is mimic how the cell migrate for a small pore, like metastasis of cancer where immune cell also they are migrating from the blood vessel to the injury site. Meanwhile, they have to suffer this kind of severe external force. So while they are migrating this small pore from the early to late, their morphology change. Also, when they check the DAPI nucleus, also they are squeezed. Meanwhile, what happened? Over two minutes, Myosin 2, another, another myosin activated marker, myosin 9, they are heavily expressed. Okay, like this. 10 micrometer, 5 micrometer confined. 10 micrometer like that, nuclear roundness. They are decreasing, but myosin 9 is not activated that much. But 5 micrometer, they start to increase. So on using microfluidic system, they prove similarly, 5 micrometer is key for inducing myosin 2 activate, activation. Also, they checked the myosin 2 level, 10, 5. You can see more compared to 10, 5 micrometer confined cell, they have more myosin 2 level, especially in peripheral area, cortex area. Okay. And then here, they also correlate the nuclear envelope excessiveness and then their dimension. When they have um, dimension, 
here excessiveness is more margin to sorry B, what is that oh. ah okay they already squeezed right this microfluidic fluid system they already squeezed so while they are squeezed means lower this excessiveness and then they have smallest nuclear dimension okay because they are already stretched and then under their stretch they have more margin to level so this kind of yeah, correlation you always think about if you want to say something and then you have to think about how you correlate these two parameters or three parameters in your content and then next okay or oh, how you can prove nucleus is very important for sensing the force and then here they extremely remove the, the nucleus from the cell okay so they using centrifuge while when you use centrifuge certain force some cell lose their nucleus because nucleus is more high density so they are going out so using certain threshold some cell have nucleus some cell doesn't have cell and the in the absence of nucleus we can call it cytoplast only cytosol okay in that case normal cell when they have nucleus cell sense and increase myosin 2 under compressed both cytoplast without nucleus they cannot feel increase of myosin 2 increase of force for cytoplast they don't have it okay another they prove they push the cell this cell they contact the nucleus upper cell without contact nucleus okay and then they want to know this at the same time while they, com while they compress the cell by micrometer this cell they have more margin too in the cytoplasm cortex area right but this cell they are compressed but not on the top of the nucleus in that case they cannot see very severe margin to level okay so we can say that this, this margin to level increase is really depending on the nucleus margin to level they are increasing cortex means this cortex nucleus is nucleus bottom up up Nucle when they are touch nucleus always they can start to show margin 2 and then force so you can prove prove this is really depending on nucleus okay and then okay nucleus is important i i can know and then nucleus membrane this is really matter so they are using two system one is lamin a one of the key nucleus membrane protein they knock down decrease their level the other one is that LBR, this is one of the nuclear membrane or the protein, they overexpressed. Okay? Actually, LAP2 lab, lab is a control. LAP2 is, they are not heavily involved in some kind of tension. But this LB, LBR is very, LAP2 is not mechanical sensitive. But LBR is more mechanical sensitive. So when they remove this lamin A, decrease the lamin level, and then nuclear envelope fluctuation, they didn't change. Actually, they should, should change in normal condition. But when they knock down the lamin A, there are no change, which means the cell nuclear membrane somehow damaged. And then nuclear rupture heavily increased lamin A is knocked down on the 5 micrometer and then force also decreasing okay 
So this laminate knockdown indicate that nuclear membrane somehow damaged from the aging or some other stiffness, blah, blah, blah. And then their sense, sensing from nucleus is also diminished. But while they are increasing this LBR, mechanosensitive protein in nucleus membrane, and then this, at that time, folding of the, this nuclear membrane is heavily increased. In that case, also, after 5 micrometer confinement, they are decreasing. Why? Because they have more folding. So they have excessive amount to be unfolded, stretched. So while they are, this is 5, but when they compress 2 or 1 micrometer, the force is similar. Because so this one to say that depending on the nuclear membrane folding amount, this external force from the nucleus as well as their sensitivity of the external force is determined. Okay? So nuclear ruler is defective in cell with altered nuclear envelope properties. So which is also support that nucleus is ruler for external force. But when nuclear, nucleus membrane is damaged or over expressed, their ruler sensitivity is changed. Okay? And then, okay, they try to see from the uh, above cell, they are mostly they are using Hella cell or other kind of uh, cancer cell line or model cell. But their major idea is this is really happening to the immune cell because immune cells, they always migrate from the blood vessel to the injured tissue, okay? So they collect uh, this immature dendritic cell from the bone marrow mouse, and then they adhere the cell. Above the old experiment, they are using suspend cell and then just put on the slide glass and the push. But they are, now they are using adherent cell. Adherent cell, they push it. What happened? They, when they are confined from the jet axis, they are more migrating. While they are confining, cell volume, uh, sorry, velocity of the cell, the speed of the cell migration, they are increased. And then this increase, increase of speed is under three micrometer. Actually, as you know, depending on the cell, they are original cell height is different. So this immune cell, smaller than the other like Hella cell or fibroblast, so they are compressed more, three micrometer confinement. And then the increasing is depending on the, I like this inhibitor, why is that? AA is this one, CPLA induced nucleum envelope calcium release. Okay, so this is, we can say that calcium release from the nucleus, when they are diminished, cell velocity increase or diminish. And then laminae, when they knock down, also they are diminished. So they track the cell, control, they are very migrating over time, okay? But when they knock down this PLA2G4A, what is this PLA2G4A? Here we can see. Uh, yeah, this CPLA2 knockdown, you can simply imagine, this is CPLA knockdown cell. There, this cell is migrating, but other cell, they didn't migrate that much. Okay, under compressed. So, this immune cell migration is also depending on the nucleus membrane stretch. From the, the calcium should be released from the nucleus membrane to the cytoplasm. This is the key for immune cell migration. They prove their concept. Four, as a control, no change. Three, increase, but after removing the calcium release from the nucleus, they are going down. Also, this, this actually, this 
immune cell narrates the trans fat, so they are using maybe a dapi only dapi stain they're using. Dapi staining, you can see little this folded structure, little bit, but they are unfolded. Okay? So when you look at your cell, in, in dapi also, you can little bit see this kind of, they are very round shape, mostly in high stiffness in TCP, but when you culture on soft gel, might be you can see this kind of not spherical structure of DAPI, little like folded. Mm. So their nuclear envelope folding is decreasing while because they are, they are stretched. And then cell morphology also, when they are compressed, they are stretched. And then margin to level also enhanced. But this PLA, CPLA knockdown, calcium release from nucleus, when they are gone, they are decreased. So this is, on, this is from the direct compression, but always you can think about when you culture the cell on different stiffness or different relaxation, similar thing happen. Okay. But this is not revealed yet. So if you report the first time, that can be a very good paper. And as a last, also they come to see the 3D collagen gel. They are using that. Or synthetic pore. So figure from figure eight, they want to generalize their concept. Okay? Pore and then 3D gel. Let's see. 3D gel control how they migrating from the top to bottom. They count the cell, they see the cell on the top. And then over time, they count the cell, how much of the cell are migrating through this 3D gel, collagen. Efficiency 20%, you can see as a control. Ectomycin inhibitor, BBS is also BBS. Also, same contractility inhibitor. ML7, also second inhibitor, they are all gone. This already we can know. As a control, SI, and then laminate knockdown, they're going down because nuclear membrane is important. Lab 2 is control of the, this LBR overexpression, normal, but LBR, they are, when they make more folding of nuclear membrane, also they're knocked down because they, are, may, they, are have, they have many folding of nuclear membrane, so they should be more squeezed. But under this condition, the squeezing is not enough. So decreasing of, so of, of migration. PLA2 secreting calcium from the nucleus when they are damaged, also decreasing of efficiency. AAPA, similar inhibitor of nuclear membrane, calcium release. But gadolinium cell membrane, like a sensitive receptor, they didn't affect. GSMTX, PHO receptor inhibitor, they didn't affect. But two APB and gesto, they are affecting, which is also related to the calcium region from the cell membrane and nuclear membrane, so cytoplasm. Then when you look at the pore, 12 or 5 micrometer, 12 or is good. Under 5 micrometer, this is hard to migrate. In that case, you can see some change, similar with this. Okay. So nuclear ruler function in cancer cell migration as well. There is a cancer cell here. So they, they start to show us nuclear is sensing from the norm, so cell line like Hella cell or another kind of normal fibroblast. But here, as a last figure, immune cell and cancer cell, they generalize their concept. This is all happen, all kind of cell. So this is the end of this paper, and then you can see this you know, many good, uh, many good supplementary data. So this is how they do migration, and then they just that, and they using this middle area, oh, top, bottom. But they most of the time they use middle area to check the myosin two level, and then this myosin two also plasmid we are having. You can use any time. We already order and then make it larger amount. So we can use it. Ask 
h e o n h e o n know where it is. Yeah. So, so also in the adherent cell, they check. Adherent cell, they are, they are more, their height is more decreasing. Not only five, but they are, they are have to push under three micrometer, and then they start to show this kind of force increase, and then m a c i n e to level increase from the adherent cell as well. And then here, they want to say this kind of cell compression induced change, nucleus membrane change, parallel membrane change, which is related to the transcription, translation, or well-known ATR kinase. So they are using this inhibitor. When they treat the inhibitor, cell viability decreasing. While they are decreasing cell viability, the excessive of plasma membrane, you know, blebbing structure, or nuclear membrane structure, they, did, they didn't change that much. So they want to say that this is not from the transcription, translation, or some biochemical signaling. This is from the only nucleus. Okay, they prove their concept. Nucleus is key, not from this transcription translation or signaling pathway. And then, some people say that, oh, five micrometer, this is some marker of the apoptosis. So they prove from this GFP NNS. NNS is they are always going to the nucleus because the NNS is peptide for embedding the nucleus. So five micrometer, always all protein there exist in nucleus. But three, two micrometer, they are ruptured. This is apoptosis. So they want to say that five micrometer is not enough to make the rupture of nucleus. So this is just normal, uh, how can I say, safety range, not that much yeah, risk range. Okay? So using PI, PI, annexing PI, staining, some, this is also marker of the nuclear membrane rupture. PI staining, 5 micrometer without rupture. But, s h o r e stress in both, they are ruptured. So they want to prove 5 micrometer is normal range, safety range, not to induce the apoptosis or rupture of the nucleus membrane. And then this is a calcium. Calcium also heavily involved, as you know. The nucleus, nucleus should release calcium while they are compressed. So 5 micrometer, calcium, this plasma also we have it, calcium release inside of the cytoplasm from the nucleus. This calcium release is depending on this inhibitor. When they inhibit the rock pathway or this is too important, nuclear stretch induced calcium release, they are inhibited, they are all gone. Okay, 5 m i c r o t e confinement. And then depending on the cell cycle, cell cycle, how they change. Also, when there are different cell cycle, as you know, G0, G1, their DNA content is 2N, G2, 4N, 2 double. Because of a double, nucleus radius is increased. And then, while they are making double, their in nuclear envelope, excessive is decreasing, because they are already stretched. In that case, force, G2 is making more, because they are already stretched. Okay, we can easily imagine. And then, they want to say that they check the time, what happened, CPLA, <coughs> the marker of the CPLA, original position in cytoplasm, while they are compressed, they are moved to the periphery of the nucleus. CPLA nucleus membrane location first, and then calcium enhanced. They want to say sequence. CPLA attached to the same nucleus membrane, and then mean, meanwhile, they are making a r a c h i n e x i and then they start to release the calcium. 
So they want to say this kind of consequence. This folding is unfolded over time, over the increase of compression. And then yeah, myosin 2 plasma membrane correlation, more blabbing structure happen. So this is the anucleid is without nucleus. Nucleid is nucleus. Anucleid cell, they have less cell volume as you expect. And then anucleid, not much change at all compared to this confined nucleus. Okay? So as, as you know, this 5 micrometer nucleus, 2 PAB, AA, they're all going down. But in, in nucleus, without nucleus, only 2 PAB is going down. Okay? Not AA involved. Mm. So something different. So they, anyhow, they show something under here. Inhibitor AA, but 2 APB without nucleus also this, they can show some myosin 2 level increase. Cause while they're removing the nucleus, ER also they can maintain inside the cell. Cause lab 2, as I said, lab 2 is a nucleus membrane, non mechanical sensitive. But this lab 2 is also located in ER. So even here, they mention the nucleus membrane and ER, they always use the same term. Nucleus, they cannot decouple the ER. They always link together. So ER, nucleus membrane, they are all the same manner. This is a nucleus ER structure, but remove the ER, they have this nucleus gone, only ER is there. So these two PAB, two APB, they can act because ER is there. And then same one, when they compress cortex, not much of change. And then laminate, they prove the best of blood, laminate nearly knocked down. And laminate knocked down, they cell, while they confine, not much of change. And LBL overexpression, they are more confined. While they confine, conf this overexpression, you can see more folding, but five micrometer confinement, the folding is a little bit gone but not enough. Mm. Still, they start to show some myosin 2, but decreased compared to the normal lab 2 condition. Okay. And then their migration. Migration, migration is motility. This is more migratory cell. They have more myosin 2 level. Stationary cell, when they maintain their movement, then they don't have that much of this margin 2 level. So depending on they decrease this PLA2 level, migration activity is severely damaged under this confinement. Okay? 4 to 3 increasing, but PLA2 nuclear calcium release, they are gone. Migration, motility, in, motility percentage of cell, they are gone. And then similarly, AA2, APB, inhibitor, migration activity, they're gone. So while they're migrating, what is important? Nuclear sensing is important. They want to say that. And then 3D, 4 is their quantification size. And then lastly, OK, this kind of compressed induced migration, they can affect the neighboring cell. They compress this cell, but only this cell, they start to show myosin to increase. Because this anarchic exit, actually they can recruit the inflammatory cell sometime, but under this, migra under this compression condition, only cell by themselves, they react. This cannot affect the other cell. Cell, neighboring cell, Myosin 2 level, only cell contacting the compression force, they are enhanced. Of the Myosin 2 level, but neighboring cell doesn't have. Okay, this is the end of this paper, so let's look at uh, one more time of this abstract. Regardless of the cell type, immune cell, cancer cell, fibroblast, hospital cell, 
Why they are compressed? Compressed, nuclear folding is unfolded. While they are unfolded, nucleus membrane is stretched, and then CPLA2 enzyme that can attach to the nuclear membrane, and then they degrade it, this lipid, with the help of the calcium, and then they are making this ARA, arachinone exit, and this arachinone exit, and then calcium also released to the outside of cell, cytoplasm, AA also outside, and then outside, and, and, Outside the nucleus, inside the cell, this calcium and ARA are connected, they can activate the cortical ectomycin contractility. And then this contractility increase, they can show cell migration enhanced. Okay. Thank you.